Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, and this is week 45. And this week, I want to talk about Pix4D that came up with a new software for inspection. I want to talk about the first beyond visual line of sight flight in Canada. I also want to talk about a pandemic drone. And lastly, I'm going to be talking about NOAA that's coming up with uh, their own UAS program. So let's get started. The first thing this week is Pix4D is coming up with a new inspection software and it's pretty cool. You can see the video playing in the background right here from their website. It's basically a, a software designed to help with tower inspections and any kind of big object inspection. And you have the ability to pre-program a flight and then create a 3D model out of it. Now Pix4D does this. If you're familiar with the software, they've been doing photogrammetry for a long time and the ability to create 3D models. And now they're doing this on the, on the vertical plan, so you can actually do a very detailed inspection of these objects. And then you can also click on each of the modules and then you'll have the pictures show up that show you exactly if you can zoom in and see if there is an issue that needs further inspection. So all this is a lot of uh, automated capabilities to create reports. And if you want more information, you can use the link at the bottom right here and, uh, and find out a little bit more about the software. The inspection industry has been booming, so I'm not surprised that Pix4D is actually going into this and creating this kind of software and making it a little bit uh, easier for pilots to go and record this information. The next thing is the first beyond visual line of sight flight in Canada. Now, last year I talked about the first beyond line of sight flights that were happening in the US. Now, Canada is jumping into it with NAF, uh, Transport Canada, which is the equivalent of the FAA. And uh, they're, they're, um, they gave the approval to Iris Automation, which is the company up there, and uh, another company called MVT Geo Solution to get the first beyond visual line of sight certificate. Their process is a little bit different than the FAA to get this, uh, this approval, but essentially they're gonna be, these drones are gonna be equipped with a, a big, it's called a detect and avoid technology, which is, I've talked about it last week actually, a way to detect if anybody else is around the drone and then get away from it, because all these flights are all autonomous flights. This kind of approval does not require any kind of ground-based observers like a typical beyond line of sight uh, would without, the, uh, without this approval right here. At the moment, this approval is limited to a testing area in uh, Alma, Quebec. And uh, you can see again more information. I'll put a link in the description if you want to hear more about this. Now, the next thing is a pandemic drone. Now, I have vouched to not say the C word in, uh, in these videos for as long as I can, and I will not do that today. Uh, but there's a company, uh, a university actually, University of South Australia, that is working on a drone that is capable of detecting the temperature and the heart rate and the respiratory rate of, of people. And what they're doing with this is they're essentially using uh, different types of sensors to check for vital signs. And based on this, they can see if people have a high, uh, an elevated temperature in the group of people, and then they can also see if they're sneezing actually, which is kind of interesting. So they say that they can do this from a distance between 30 and 150 feet away from the people. The technology was interestingly designed in the first place for war zones and natural disasters. And then now with what is going on, they're using this technology to do this. So it is still in development, but again, I'm gonna put a link down there if you wanna read more about this. Kind of a interesting, cool technology, not necessarily related to what we do now, but just in general to see the use of drone for good and for helping the population in general. And the last thing today is NOAA. NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration that is establishing a UAS program to collect data. Now, as you know, NOAA collects a lot of environmental data for science. They have different products and different services that they offer. Uh, if you're a pilot, a manned pilot, and you're looking for the weather, that data is captured usually by NOAA. Um, the, what they want to do with the UAS program is actually uh, map the seafloor, for example, do ocean exploration. Now we're thinking UAS, unmanned aircraft system, not necessarily just flight, not necessarily just drones, but also doing ocean uh, exploration and doing also emergency response. So I think this is a really cool program, a really good use of UAS technology. Uh, they'll be hosted in two different places. One of them will be in Lakeland, Florida, and the other one will be the University of Southern Mississippi in Gulfport, uh, Mississippi. So again, links down there if you have more information. And, uh, and this is all I have for this week. I'm, the, the news is really not all that exciting at the moment for UAS, so I'm trying to keep it short, tell you what is going on in the world. Last week I talked about the FA that is trying to figure out a solution for people that have expiring written exams. So 
at the moment, this is April 2nd, today as I'm recording this, they still have not come up with a solution for people that uh, needed a test to be done in March and their certificate has not expired. If you took your test, your written exam in March of 2018, two years ago, you are technically not allowed to fly as a commercial pilot right now. You do not have the privileges to do this, so you cannot fly any commercial missions. Uh, I'm expecting the FAA any time, probably even by the time I post this tomorrow, to come up with a solution. If that's the case, then I will put a note in here telling you what happened. Uh, but uh, but for now, it's the, not no no solution at the moment. If you took an exam again in March of 2018 or before, then you cannot exercise the privileges of your remote pilot certificate as of April 1st, okay? If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Please subscribe. We're getting really, really close to 3,000 uh, subscribers. So uh, please go ahead and, and subscribe and you'll get updates on all the videos that are posted every week. I love having discussions with you guys about all these topics. And this is all I have. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Thank you.